Hey everybody, so if you follow me on social media you'll know that I was sent a Cena 30k headset a few weeks back, maybe even a couple of months back, um, to use and to do a review on. Um, when I do my reviews I always keep the product for a long while before I actually make the video so I can give you a proper thought out and experience based review. Uh, Reno has sent a headset as well so we've been using them while we've been talking, riding together or you know as pillion on the bike. Um, so we've been able to test all the functionalities pretty much. Um, but in this video, I'm basically going to show you a few different things that we tested and just give you my general opinion on them. Now, the first thing I'll say is before we got the 30Ks, we had the Cena 10C, which is the one with the camera, and the 10S. These are both great headsets. There was no complaints from us using these over the time we used them. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that the camera on this was just not really up to par for vlogging, but for, for insurance purposes, it's great. Um, this is a very basic headset. It's brilliant. I can't say anything against it. This is one that Reno really uses, one that I used. Uh, so I really do like seeing this products. Before now, I've used the cheap Chinese versions, and they're just they're just not as good. If it's something you're going to use regularly, it's not worth having them. The battery life is massively better on these. The uh, quality of the audio is massively better. And also, we found with the cheap ones, with the over 40 miles an hour, with a bit of wind, you just couldn't hear each other. These are plenty loud enough to be able to hear what you're doing. So, knowing that I am a big fan of Cena, the 30K arrived and I was expecting big things. And, um, well, there isn't a huge amount of difference, really, functionality wise. Well, there is between like the 10S and this for us because we generally just use them for the basic stuff. I use mine for listening to music, listening to the sat nav if I need to use it, uh, communications with a pillion uh, or if I'm riding with people and uh, the phone if I ever use it, but I very rarely do on the bikes. And that's the thing that I'm going to focus on in this video, the core things that we care about. Yeah, there's a lot more features to these things, and if you go through the settings, if you go through the, the manuals and the things that are online, you'll find there's lots of clever little things I can do. So I'm going to concentrate on form and function, the audio capabilities, you know, for like listening to music, how loud and things that goes, uh, and also talking about the use of it as an intercom between people. Uh, but I'll get into that each bit by bit. Because we've been filming this over the past couple of months, this video will be in different sections uh, from where we filmed at different times. So the next piece of video you're going to see is the unboxing, basically. I keep it short and sweet, but I do discover what has proven to be one of the things I like the most about the 30K. Okay, so we've taken the sleeve off, and in the box you get, because this is the dual one, two of them, and the two sort of base units for your helmet. Uh, these are the units themselves. There you go, with their uh, little pop-up aerials. I reckon this is going to make a big difference. I don't know, I've not used these yet, as you can tell, because I'm unboxing them. Okay, so under the first layer, you have these little doors, and in here you've got your instruction manual and all sorts of, you know, setup information, how to use it, etc. And then you've got two of these, one per headset, and this is basically your self-adhesive mount, because the clamp mount comes already fitted onto the base unit. We use the clamp mounts. And then you've got uh, a different type of microphone, you've got the self-adhesive pads, different sticky pads. You literally have everything you need is in there. And you get two of those, because you get one per headset. And then you get the same 12-volt um, you know, cigarette charger type cable, and uh, another normal type USB charger cable for each one. So you basically, as I say, the exact same thing for each unit. Okay, so this is what I currently use, which is the Cena 10C. Reno's been using the 10S. For a size comparison, you know, it's it's very comparable. In fact, I think this is a little bit smaller because it doesn't have, you know, the camera coming out the front. Um, but the first thing I've noticed, which is the best thing, is that this is a really good advancement between these, is, well, to remove this one, you have to pull up this... I'm not making this look difficult on purpose, it actually is. Uh, you've got to pull up on this and then pull that out there, and then it slides off that way. Because if you want to charge it, you need to take it off the helmet or charge it on the helmet, and for me, charging it on the helmet is just a bit inconvenient, so I like to be able to take these off. So the 10C is not easy, you know, you're, you're taking plugs out. Okay, and then for Reno with the 10S, this one's actually a lot easier, you just press here and it comes off like that. Thing is though, it, it wouldn't take much to brush against that by accident, maybe. Uh, it's never happened. You know, I'm not saying this is some design flaw or anything, but it's quite a light fitting. You know, it doesn't take a lot. 
But anyway, the new ones, this is the best thing I've noticed so far before I've even used them. Okay, so before I've even used them, this is the best thing I've noticed about the 30Ks. So the base bit that goes onto your helmet is pretty much the same as the old ones. You know, this one's fit with the clamp mount. You can change it to a self-adhesive. Here's the speakers, here's the boom mic. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the way that these fit on is they just slide like that, and they're on there. And then to release them, there's a button on the back, which is a good, firm, positive press. And then it just slides off. That, for charging, is so good. And the other thing is, because you're not playing with your cables, you're not going to get any fatiguing issues with the cables. You know, this is just a nice, it's pins and uh, pads, and it just goes together nicely. You know, it's really solid. And then this button, which does take a good, firm press to remove it. Cena? Yes, that is the best advancement I've seen so far. Now I'm going to fit these onto the helmet, which won't be too difficult, and there are videos out there you can watch for how people do that, but basically, you know, this clamps to the side of the shell, you put Velcro pads inside your helmet, put the speakers in there, and that's it. It's not a lot to it. I don't need to show you that. So there you go, you get everything in the box you're going to possibly need. If you get a single, you know, you'll just get one side of that box with 130k. Um, it's great, and that function of removing it off of the head, uh, off of your helmet with one button press rather than playing with cables or this detached mechanism, which I wasn't entirely sure of. I mean, it held, it always did, but it would have only taken a slight tap on the top to make it fall off. Yeah, massively better. And the general update in looks, you know, it's a lot sleeker looking, it's a lot nicer looking. I think they're great. Now I'm going to use a slight cheat sheet here being the box because uh, this has got lots of key features and I'm just going to go through and see if there's anything I should say about it. Now the 30k, one of the big things about the 30k is it's got this thing called mesh intercom. Now before when you paired up with other people you'd have to press and hold buttons and it would start beeping and you pair your headsets together and if you needed a third person in you had to sort of pair one and the other and then one and another and it, it got a little bit complicated but well, the mesh system makes that a lot easier. Um, and it actually opens up some new possible doors and something I thought about in the past and and they've kind of made it which is that the mesh system allows you to connect and disconnect if you lose range and stuff and come back it all sort of automatically and seamlessly jumps back in whereas in it didn't always do that on the old ones well in a lot of cases it didn't so it's more like an open channel which you can control through the app on your phone and I must say that the app for the 30k, which is different to the other ones, um, is nice and simple. You know, you've got options like using your phone with it, uh, listening to music, changing the settings. This is for the mesh intercom, you can turn it on, and this is what I'm going to get onto. Basically, the mesh intercom allows you to have your headset in a, in a private or public mode. Uh, the private mode is where you you know you have authorized people that can talk to you, but as I understand it, the public mode means that you can literally, if you've got if you're two people passing each other on the road with a 30k, and you've got it on public mode, it will automatically give you the option to connect to them, and you can chat with someone you don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to do that or not, but it's just it's very cool. That that's how open it is. It's not you don't have to be stood next to each other and stuff like that. Um, so that does make things much easier. But when you're just like me, when it's just me and Reno that's riding together, generally we don't, we wouldn't need the mesh function because we just pair the headsets. So we just press a button, and they can connect to each other. So in a nutshell, that's what the mesh system is. But you can read a lot more about it. Okay, running down my cheat list of points that they point out: Bluetooth uh, version 4.1. Uh, Bluetooth intercom up to two kilometers, uh, 1.2 miles. Now, as I've mentioned before, uh, the cheap Chinese type headsets you can get, they have a very poor range on them. In fact, the problem that me and Reno had was if we got split up over the course of the space of a roundabout or maybe 100 yards, it would cut out and we wouldn't be able to hear each other and then one of us would have to stop and it would, you know, it caused a few problems actually. Um, it became more of a hindrance than a help having those headsets. The new ones that we got after that, you know, the 10C and the 10S, were brilliant. The range on these is, you know, it's more than enough for the road with general riding when you're paired. Now this brings me to the next segment of video because we actually did test with the old headsets what was the maximum range before they started cutting out. Now we did this in the straightest line we could, there was no obstructions in between, and um, well, you can see what we got with these now. Okay, so we are now going to do a test of the 10S and the 10C, look at me, this one. <laughs> I'm going to, basically Reno is going to stay here, I'm going to ride off until the signal dies, and then we'll try the same thing with the 30Ks when we get them on the helmets. Yes. So, you can hear me. I can hear you. I really don't know when it's going to die. <laughs> we don't know. <sighs> 
I know this is straight line, so because I've experienced with these headsets, you know, straight line they can go a lot further than they can if you go through trees and have buildings and stuff. But if we do this as a baseline test, if the 30k lasts a lot longer, we'll know because it's gone that much further and the situation is the same. Well, it hasn't broken up at all yet. Oh, oh, oh no, it's starting to. Now. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh. I'm hearing nothing back, Hello? so I'm now going to turn around and see I when it comes back in. The signal is lost. Oh, oh. it's coming back. <laughs> Hold on, let me try facing the other way. Right. Hello? At this distance, if I face away from you, mm -hmm. it dies, and if I look at you, it comes back. Ah, that's interesting. Oh, no, it's, it's working again. Let's see if I can go any further. Yeah, it's working. Oh, I can see you. Oh, no, it's dying again. Oh. Now, it is at this range, it is just dying. Oh, every. It's, it's like this six foot gap is all the difference. Hello? Now, in oh. turning around, it died. Hello? So, there is your answer. We'll have to test them with a 30k next. So there you go, we gave the 10C and the 10S the best possible chance, and that was the range that it got. I don't think that's very close to what is claimed for those headsets, but it's plenty. We've never found ourselves disconnecting due to being broken up in traffic with the with the seniors. That's just never happened because the range has always been plenty. So not as good as I think they claim, but definitely usable and enough. So now we're going to try out the 30Ks. I was hoping that these would have a bit more range, and then when I noticed they have this aerial, that pops up. I thought, ah, maybe we're in for a treat of a little bit extra in range here. Okay, so now we have the 30Ks on and we're gonna do the same thing. Reno's gonna wait here. I'm gonna go down there and see what range we get. I'll be back. <laughs> so with the 10S and the 10C, they run out just up here. We've extended the aerials and both of the 30Ks to give it the best chance. So let's see how much further it gets. <laughs> okay, well, we are still clear. Yeah, I can still hear you. Let's right, see. we're nearly at the point that it cut out with the 30, uh, the 10S and 10C. Yeah, it was about here last time I remember. No, 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 it was a bit further up than this. It got to the point where I just couldn't see you anymore. Okay, it's about here. Yeah, because I can't see you anymore. Hold on a minute. We had a crackle. Oh, it's still working a little bit. Crackle. Yeah, I can still hear you. I can, I can still hear Dippy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's crackling. Anymore, crackling. Yeah. Can you still hear me? Up a bit. Crackling. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so we've basically found the limit. Um, if it's facing this way, Reno can hear me. If it's facing this way, Reno can't. We've got an extra 100, 100 yards or something. It's nowhere near what these are supposed to be able to do. And this is almost best case scenario because we're in a straight line. There's not a lot between us. There's no buildings and trees and stuff like that. So it's a very usable distance on the road. You know, that's a couple of roundabouts, not a problem. But it's nowhere near what the numbers are always claimed on these sorts of things. I don't understand those those claims. Um, it, it doesn't go that far, but if you're just doing it for general riding, it's way more than enough range for most people, I find. And with the uh, you know the mesh system on these now, if you do, you know, I'd say you're riding with some mates and one person, you, you're the sort of person that just buzzes off for a minute and then you wait for the others to catch up. You're not going to have a problem of trying to get your headsets reconnected because with the mesh mode, it's just going to you know click all back together and you will be chatting again. So back to the cheat sheet, 30k up to four way intercom. Now I haven't used this with any more than one other person. As I say, it's just been me and Reno. I have used the 10C in with three people in a group. And uh, once we've got everything connected together, yeah, it works perfectly. There's, there's nothing bad to say about it. Now the scene is we've got a universal intercom mode, which basically means they can communicate with other types of headsets. Uh, I've never managed to get that to work with the headsets that I had available to me, but given that they were very odd, well, it was, uh, with, I couldn't get them to pair with the cheap Chinese ones, and I couldn't get it to pair with a um, Scala Rider G4, which is a very old headset, which it was alright, but it's, it's nothing compared to how good these are, even compared just to, like, the 10C. S, even. 
one of the other nice features of the intercom mode is the fact you can share music. It's basically, it's called on here, uh, audio multitasking, which just basically means that you can have your headset paired with someone else, you can be talking, but in the background there'll be music playing. So when you're not talking, the music plays to both of you, comes from one phone, you know, uh, and goes to both of you. And then when you talk, it cuts over it. Uh, so very nice if you're out on really long roads as a pair of you and just want to listen to music and relax and look at the scenery. Or if you want to play jokes on your friends and play the worst possible music you can think of while they're having to ride around, I would be that guy. So go for it. And that's one big point I will make. Headsets with friends out on rides, it opens up the experience so much because rather than just being three people on the road riding along, you become three people communicating at the same time. You can talk to each other, you can make jokes. It's also a lot safer because you've got three sets of eyes connected, you can look out for each other, you get warnings of things up ahead, all the sorts of, it makes it much safer in my opinion, but you do also get to have quite a bit of fun taking the mick out of your friends and, and having a good day. The seniors also have voice commands. I'll be honest, this is not a function I've tried to use because I've had such bad experiences with voice commands in the past because particularly if you have your phone enabled, would you ask for one thing, you accidentally start calling someone on a motorway and it called the worst person you could think of. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't really used that too much. Um, they mentioned that it's water resistant. Now, I've had a couple of people say they had some water issues with the seniors in the past. Well, I've had, th we've had these two, we've used them in monsoonical conditions and we never had an issue with these whatsoever in the rain. And I can say the same thing for this. I mean, this is actually covered in salt from all the sea spray that I was getting drenched in yesterday. It's absolutely fine. I do not even think for a second about this thing when it comes to being out in the rain. Another nice little feature is that you can actually use this while it's charging. So if you're on a long road trip, you can have it plugged into a battery pack or into your bike. But you can plug it in and you can still use it while it's charging, which is a good handy thing if you're on an epically long trip. Now, I'll be honest, the thing that I use this for more than anything by, you know, a vast majority is just to listen to music when I'm riding. I love listening to music when I'm riding. The sound from this, it's good, it's full. There is a little bit of bass there, not too much. You know, it's it's a good sound for a headset. Uh, I've heard a lot, lot worse. The uh, small Chinese ones were terrible for sound. There was no bass. These sound great. Can't say they sound any better than the older ones, but they sound great. And it's perfectly good to listen to music. And this is where the question of like volume comes in. Uh, is it loud enough to listen to music on a, mo on a motorway at 70 miles an hour? Yes, uh, even with a loud bike. You know, I've got an XJ6 which has got a silly loud exhaust on it. And even with the wind noise of using a peaked helmet, I can still hear my music perfectly comfortably at 70 miles an hour. And I don't even have to crank it up to the point it's hurting my ears. So the answer to that is yes, you can listen to music at speed with these. And the, from my experience, the best volume and sound quality you can get from these is from, from headsets, is from the Cena's. And hand in hand with that, and referring back to the intercom function, the sound quality from when you're talking to each other uh, is brilliant. It sounds slightly modulated, but only very slightly, but it makes it very easy for you to hear each other when you're riding as a pair. If it's, you know, if it's a bit noisy, you can actually really get through it. Um, they don't constantly transmit, so it's not like a constant you can hear all the noises. They have a level where when you start talking, they'll start transmitting, otherwise it goes quiet. Uh, and you can adjust that sensitivity setting and other settings, and I'd be honest, loads of settings in that app. So if you have a 30K, get the app because you can change all sorts on it. Also worth mentioning, it has a built-in uh, FM radio, which the FM signal round in the UK, anyway, as far as I've found, isn't great. But things, the big stations like, you know, Radio 1, if my phone's died or, or something like that and I want some music, I can just, you know, put it onto FM. And it's perfectly used. Certainly if you want to listen to the news or traffic updates or something like that, perfectly fine. It's the general use of these things is made up of this wheel and this button. There is a button here and there's a button here. And to turn it on, you press this one and this one. And if you want to uh, start the intercom, excuse me. Uh, if you want to use the intercom you, you, and it's you're already paired, you just press that for a second and that will connect to the other person and it, you know, you'll know you start being able to talk. Or if you press and hold it, it starts up your music player and then you can jog forwards and backwards by pressing and spinning the wheel through your songs and the volume controls for that as well. That, as I say, is the thing that I use it for most. The only thing I'll say is it's, it's sometimes easy to accidentally try and engage an intercom when you're trying to skip a track just because of the way it is. They've actually increased the size of the jog wheel, you might notice, from, uh, which are these about the same size? No, it's even bigger still. The 30K's got the biggest jog wheel. Yeah, because this one's tiny, look, compared to that one. Uh, and I did have problems with 
bumping the wrong thing all the time with this. Um, but you got used to it. So it wasn't like something I'd really moan about. It was just more the fact that I had gloves on. But it, as long as you, once you got the knack of it, you just kept your finger to the edge and you didn't hit that middle button by chance. Um, but with this one, much easier. But still, I have had the... the, the the accidentally starting up the intercom and it just tries to connect to the intercom for a second and then you have to wait a minute and it goes back to your music. It's not the end of the world. Battery life, what is it like? These are brilliant. Literally, I will listen to music all week long. I will use it to talk as an intercom and I might charge it once a week. Uh, it is not like a phone that you plug in every single time you use it. You charge this and you use it for several days and then you just charge it again. The battery life is great. I can't give you facts and figures because it's so sporadic, you know, it's chopped up because you just turn it off and you just turn it back on when you need it. But the battery life is fantastic. It's not a, 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 a something you recharge all the time. It's like a weekly thing. Has the 30K got a longer battery life than the older ones? In my experience, I couldn't say. Uh, I really couldn't. They last so long you don't really think about it. I, I would have said they were about the same. Charge time versus how long you can use them, about the same. If you were using the 10C with a camera, then yeah, you're going to eat your battery a lot faster with that. But for general use, very good on battery life. I think really that covers everything that I can really give an opinion on. I can you know, read off some more facts and figures about the things that it can do, but if you were honestly looking at buying one of these, you're going to look at all that yourself. The fact is I've talked about the things that are most important to me and the things that I really have paid attention to between all the headsets that I've used, and that's why I honestly, I'm not being paid to say this by anyone, and if it wasn't any good, I would say so, think that these are the best heads that I have used anyway. And from, my, from what I've seen, a lot of people agree that these are the best headsets that you can buy at the moment. Not necessarily just this model, because that's gonna be my final point. People have looked into these and been like, they're not cheap, and it's like, no, they're not cheap. If you look at the old ones, they're actually a lot cheaper. Now, versus the even cheaper Chinese versions, is it worth spending the money to get one of these, a cheaper older one, over the, old, the, the cheap Chinese ones? 110%, yes, do it, don't go for the cheap ones. If you're gonna use it regularly, if it's something that you and your wife or partner are gonna use, Get one of these, um, get a Cena. Now, then the question is, is it worth getting the 30K over these ones? If you owned one of these, I, d I wouldn't say it was worth upgrading just yet, unless you really want that mesh and, and the few other features that it has. It's very specific features. But the general core features of like, you know, telephone and, and listening to your music and those sorts of things, they're very comparable. So get one of the older Cenas if you wish. Um, but if you want the newer features, go for the new ones. Now, that said, as I've mentioned before, the way that this connects to the helmet, it's not as good, it's not as slick, it's a bit more bulky, and the way that it fits, you see, this is all that's left over on the side when you take this off, and then you just slide it on, like so, and that's it. And it's nice and sleek, it doesn't look out of place, and to get it off, as, I've, as I keep mentioning, press the button and it just pops off. Nice and simple. So there we go, I think we're at the end. So my general consensus is seeing a headset, best headsets made out there. What one you get depends on what budget you have to spend. Um, is it worth getting the 30K to upgrade from one of these? Well, if you just want to do it, hell yeah, it's, it's a really nice little thing. If you're looking to get one headset from having no headsets, I would probably say, Maybe get the older one. But if you want to get the new one, get the new one. Um, I know that might not be what Cena are hoping I'm going to say, because this is the latest and greatest, but the fact is that their kit is so good and always has been so good. At this point, they're just tweaking and fine-tuning. And, and for me, there isn't a huge leap forward with this in the uses that I have. But when it comes to the intercom and you know, the, that mesh system, that solves a lot of problems for a lot of people. And for you, that might be a way big enough factor to go and choose one of these. So there you go. There is my opinion on headsets in general, the 30K, and everything I could think to mention that was relevant to me, uh, where I can give it a say, an experienced opinion rather than just something I've read off a box or made my mind up about. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and check out some of my other videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Cena for sending me those headsets for review. We're going to continue using them and they'll help us do our dual vlogs for many months to come, I'm sure, if not years. What's your 20? About 16 miles this side of Mississippi. Whoa, hold it. I just passed another Kojak with a Kodak. This place is crawling with bears. Where the hell are you?